Welcome to episode 183 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg. My co-host, Warren Sklar, is a little under the weather this week, but we hope you feel better, Warren. And a happy new year to you, and happy new year to everybody else. The new year's coming up here. I got uh, two great guests always come back, and we always have a lot of fun. First is uh, Patrice Brennamore. How you doing, Patrice? And five, six, seven, eight. No. Um, yeah. We were counting, so I was like, oh, that's, yeah, hold it. Um, no, I'm doing good. I'm <laughs> I'm supposed to be off work, and I'm not, but um, that's fine. Uh-oh. Well, well, I mean, work emergency is like we had a little bit of a we had yeah. a little bit of a technical issue in our network. So, well, that, yes, we're recovering. So emergencies happen. And Jeff mm-hmm. came back on the show. Always love having you, Jeff. How you doing? I, I'm doing great, and it is absolutely awesome to get to hang out with both of you. I'm sorry yeah. that that uh, it's not the whole team, yeah, well. uh, but you know I'm. Yeah. Warren needs to heal. Got to so, heal, Warren. Feel better. Yeah. And so this, there's no better way in like spending the probably the last show of the year. So, yeah, at least right. I guess for me it will be great for both of you to be here. Uh, like I said, this is the last show of 2021. Uh, I've had a lot of blasts, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about with, with our. Uh, the year in review of Apple in 2021 and maybe a little bit of future for 2022. And as always, we also talk about the news. There's always find some things that were, that were happening this past week. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and just jump right in here. Uh, first story, this is on Mac rumors. Um, new Apple card customers can now get 5% cash back on Apple purchases. Uh, it was this week as we record this through January 31st of 2022, uh, any new Apple Card customer can receive in the U.S. looks like, and others who can accept it. I know. I feel bad, Patrice. You can't get. You can't still can't get an Apple Card. Uh, well, I have one. So. Oh, you do. Okay. I, I, uh, I still have mine. So yes. Oh, from okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, um, I still have mine from the U.S. So. Got it. Got it. So, <laughs> but like, don't get five percent, which is bad. No, this is only for new customers. So five percent cash back uh, is then mm. is the normal three percent uh, for typically offered to us people who've had the card since day one. Um, mm-hmm. So if you create a new account between December 26, 2021 through January 31st, 2022, you'll be eligible for the 2% higher cashback on iPhone, Apple Watch, Mac, and other purchases uh, when paid in full. Um, uh, if you do the installments, it'll, it'll be 3%. So, uh, yeah, I think the Apple Card's been just been doing quite well for Apple and, and for Goldman Sachs, for that matter. Um in fact, I just got a limit increase. I didn't even ask for it. <laughs> so, th- th- how much I, how much money I'm spending on Apple lately? So, uh, mm-hmm. what do you think, Jeff? Um, yeah, G- good for new Apple Card subscribers. Yeah, nice yeah. little perk. It, it does. Yeah. And I mean, and, you know, I hadn't planned on getting an Apple Card originally. No. Okay. And no. but then I, well, because I thought. You know why? What am I doing that uh, that would make an Apple Card worthwhile to me? And uh, and then one day I realized, oh, I'm buying enough stuff over time, and I have enough Apple subscription stuff. I might as well just do all of that yep. on an Apple Card. Yeah, yep. I mean, and and also you have an Apple Podcast, or you're on Apple Podcast, so that that alone is reason enough. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, so you know, so I, I've got my Apple Card, and mm-hmm. um, and um, yeah, I wish everyone could have one just because it's kind of cool to pull out this white card that could be used mm-hmm. as a weapon. Well, I don't pull yes. it out. Rarely do I pull it out of my I, wallet. I, I only pull it out <laughs> certain places to show it because yeah. some people yes. are very excited about it. It's like, oh, do you you have Apple Card? I'm like, yeah. They want to see it, like especially here in Europe, because you can get it here, and like even in the Apple stores in Vienna, like they haven't, they have never seen them, because yeah. I mean, yeah. especially with COVID and no travel, like they, nobody has traveled from the US to, to Vienna apparently, I, I, I or like not going to the Apple store. I like taking it and dropping it on the table so they can hear the <laughs> bling bling. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, I've never put mine in a reader ever. Me neither. No, I have. <laughs> I've never rarely, even used it once. Very rarely. Like, yeah. But if they take Apple Pay, no, Apple Watch goes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. I mean, that alone is surprising enough for most people. So, <laughs> yeah. Still. Yes. 
Uh, next story, Mac Rumors, uh, Apple shares three humorously dramatic ads showing off the Apple 13 Pro ca- camera capabilities. Uh, Apple debuted these three three new shot on iPhone ads. I just, I just think Apple just makes these awesome ads. Um, there were there were three of them, uh, Detectives, The Basement, and Pave, and they were uh, sampling uh, the uh, the cinematic mode. That was a really funny one, uh, uh, shooting in low light, and... Uh, uh, shooting with the 3x optical zoom, so they can highlight the three main features of uh, of what the uh, the iPhone 13's camera has is capable uh-huh. of. So, um, a lot of fun. Always fun to watch these ads and uh, check it out. We got the link in the show notes. Uh, what do you think, Patrice? I mean, it's really interesting to me. I mean, Apple's ads have mostly been very, very good. I mean, there've been a couple where it's like, eh, okay. Uh, but it used to be that that ads were like massive productions and like a whole thing. Yep. And I'm not going to say like the ads that, that Apple is putting out these days aren't like produced and aren't like probably a lot of work, but they they feel like more normal people doing things and showing off the features that Apple has instead of just like uh, a silhouette dancing in front of a colored screen, stuff like that. So I'm I'm always like I'm always happy to see them and I'm as I said I mean we have to remember they're still ads like it's it's not it's not a movie or something it's an app so take like take everything they're saying with, with a little bit of a grain of salt yeah absolutely absolutely um, Jeffrey think um, I I think Apple like Patrice said does great ads they and. Do. Uh, mm-hmm. They're, they're a lot of fun, and clearly they work because we're talking about them right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. No, they're, compared to a lot of other companies' ads, they're very, very good. Oh, yeah. Fun to watch. I mean, well, look at Microsoft ads. I'm like, oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't even want to comment on that, how bad they are. Um, <laughs> But the detectives one was interesting because the cinematic mode is, is just a pretty amazing feature. But he was the 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 one guy that was not, was turning over to the other guy, and it wasn't going into focus right away until he really turned, um, and 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 cause he he kept asking asking why is am I, why, am I in focus? Am I in focus? And then he he finally got in focus when he turned. <laughs> um, so that's what's unique about that feature. I've played with that a uh, mm-hmm. bunch a bunch of times. So. <laughs> Our friend Guy Searle. When I was at Mac Stock, I, that was the best one. I had a video I posted out on social media. I remember that. that was I'm just, a lot I'm, of fun. I'm just, we're sitting out outside in, in the Woodstock Square, and uh, I turn over, look at him, and because he got very jealous because I had the, I think I had just got mm. the phone. Like this, that's the second day I had it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so see, uh, and that's my, that's my problem. I don't have people around that I could record and like yeah. do videos with. So I have only accidentally enabled it. <laughs> <laughs> I really so, want to try it. Like I'm super excited. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess we got. Yeah, we got lucky when it wasn't as bad as things are now. But it was at least we had a chance to to try it out. So, uh, next story here: Some Apple users are experiencing uh, charging issues after upgrading to Watch OS 8.3. A number of Apple Watch Series 7 owners were experiencing issues after with charging after the update. To, 8.3, uh, according to some reports uh, that were out there and through Mac rumors, uh, many of the complaints related to third-party Apple Watch chargers and users were finding that these devices no longer worked to charge their Apple Watches. Yeah, I've, I've, I've kind of noticed that. I don't, I don't remember, Patrice, do you have, you have a Series 7 or no? Uh, no. Okay. No, so. I didn't upgrade. Yeah, so I, I did give in, but um, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, <laughs> so I still have the old uh, Apple Watch charger that was on the you know the round base that lifts up. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's on my nightstand, it, and I definitely see that it charges a lot slower than um, uh, the, the the USB C's charger that it came that, that it came with. Yeah. Um, um, which and, and which I, is not a problem. For, for most people or for a lot of people if they're charging like if they're just charging overnight because it, i mean if you if you're asleep for like let's say seven hours right if it's a little bit faster it's a little bit slower it's going to finish in that time it's a yeah. different story when you're like me i mean i'm basically wearing it 24 7 and i only charge it in the morning and then it does sure. make a difference 
Especially if you you bump it, then it kind of nudges mm-hmm. off of the, the <laughs> yes, charger. I've done that a lot of um, a couple of times. It, when I travel, I have the Skosh um, charging station, so it's got the mm-hmm. uh, 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 the iPhone wireless charging and the and the Apple Watch charger. So I when it goes on to that one, I can. It seems a little a little faster than the the Apple one, but uh, that's all right. Like mm-hmm. you said, it it isn't a huge deal, yeah. but. As article says, it's just it's it's isolated. There hasn't been a ton of uh, a ton of uh, complaints out there, but uh, be aware yeah. if you do ha- if you I mean, do have it's one. It's a recurring theme. It seems like it. Seven. Yeah, mm-hmm. seems like it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, mean, for, for me, the whole charging thing is a little bit it's a little bit of a challenge because I mean, I have one of those like really nice solo loops, and I mean, they they look awesome. But for chargers, they're kind of a challenge. Like, I mean, the, the, the standard Apple pack, you can just put in and it, it works. And it's usually what I use, like, this here on the desk. Um, and that's what I use. But I have a nice, like, I think I think it's a 12 South, 12 South uh, charging mm-hmm. stand. Yep. Uh, and that one is, ch- is struggling a little bit with that. Absolutely. So I think it depends on your charger, too. It, it does. So, all right. Uh, next story: uh, HomePod Mini uh, as uh, the users this year helped nearly double its market share of smart speakers and screens. Uh, Amazon continues to lead the market in uh, smart speakers and smart screens with devices like the Echo Dot and the Echo Show, but Apple has nearly doubled its market share in, in this segment thanks to the HomePod Mini. This is according to some research from Strategy Analytics. Um, they're saying here in estimates that Apple shipped a, a shipped a 4 million smart speakers in the third quarter of 2021, taking a 10.2% market share uh, of the combined smart speaker and smart screen market. And Google's Nest Mini was a top selling device in its segment, followed by the HomePod Mini and then Amazon's fourth gen Echo Dot. Uh, interesting numbers here. I think Apple still has a long way to go. And I think we're going to have this, mm-hmm. we'll have this discussion a little bit here about uh, what, you know, what, what was released in 2021 and smart speakers, uh, so sometimes you question some of these reports, like Jeff, you and I have always said, right? That you you, you wonder about guess. these numbers. You wonder about these numbers. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, don't forget, Apple is in this case, or actually any most other manufacturers are competing with a company who basically gives them away. Right. Yeah. yeah I that's mean, true. They're, they're 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 very very cheap when you buy them, but like Amazon has so many deals that it's basically free most of the time. Yeah. No. Yeah. Apple did discount with. I mean, I think it was sold on Amazon. Uh, uh, they were selling mm-hmm. the HomePod Mini for seventy nine ninety nine. I mentioned it to our friend John F. Braun, a Mac Geek app, and uh, he got excited about. Oh, I'm, I think I might go buy it. So, <laughs> sure enough, he did and bought it in stereo pair, and he's raving about it. So, I was, oh, this sounds so great. And he was. Yeah, and, um, yeah the HomePod's been out what two almost two years now. I think the Mini. Uh, is it a year? Two years? Mm, no. About a year and a half, I want to say. I think it came out in 2019. Like it was at, at least announced in 2019. Yeah. Like it shipped in late 20. Yeah, oh, sorry, 2020. Yeah, not 2019. Yeah, because the home pod got discontinued this, uh, yeah, this year. I think it shipped so. in late 2020. Yep. That, so that sounds it. about right. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Not in the 2019. Fall. Yeah. So I'm. I'm I'm actually going to get another one. I'm going to pick one up at the store when I'm in Vienna <laughs> next week. So. Well, yeah, we'll, I need we'll a talk. stereo pair. It it is fun. Yeah. It is good. So we'll we'll talk about that just a bit here through our our twenty twenty one review. Um, then uh, last story here. This is through T Mobile. T Mobile News. Uh, T Mo News. Uh, T Mobile encountered a new data breach. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Mm. This was uh, just the, uh, this was just reported uh, as we record this a day or so, so ago. But it's a small. Uh, number of customers what's happening is the sim card assigned to a mobile number on their account has been illegally reassigned or limited account information was viewed unauthorized sim swaps uh, unfortunately Mm -hmm. is a common industry-wide occurrence Uh, however this issue was quickly corrected by their team as they're saying put safety guards in place blah 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 but uh, i mean i just i just upgraded the iphone from my mother-in-law because uh uh my wife got the, thir- the thirteen, and uh, she had the eleven. So and then and, and uh, mother-in-law had the 
eight plus, so she was due. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so she went with the eleven Pro she has now. Uh, so all we did is a simple sw- sim swap. I took the sim out of the eight and eight plus, and then put it right into the eleven Pro. And mm-hmm. I've been doing that for years, and of ones that I still continue to use sim cards now. The, hist- the the future of SIM cards, that's another story. Uh, yes. Where is that going? So, uh, mm. But, yeah, it's just, it's unfortunate. There have been two, two breaches in a year for T-Mobile. It's it's not good. It's not the only company in Asia like but, that. But they're all dealing with it. <laughs> AT&T, Verizon. Yeah. I mean, not even, like, not, not even every carrier. I would say most big companies, one way or another, mm-hmm. have to deal with it. Like either by preventing them or really fighting a lot to to keep stuff secure, or by having breaches. So, yep, it's unfortunate. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I I've been writing about the whole data breach thing for <clears throat> excuse me for a couple of companies mm-hmm. recently, and um, yeah, it's while we can poke fun at T-Mobile and say, oh, another one in a year, what are they doing? <laughs> Come on. Um, I mean, this this is a constant barrage that companies have to deal with. Mm-hmm. And if you're a high-profile company, the problem is uh, exponentially worse because now you're being intentionally targeted and not just being uh, uh, hit on with, with bots. And... Uh, yeah, it just sucks. I mean, I feel bad for all these companies that have to deal with this. Now, when it turns out that the data breach is related to having uh, sensitive information, just like in a clear text file, okay, now I'm ready to to pile on for that because <laughs> you should never ever have that data in a in a uh, plain text file. No, <laughs> yeah. Never, never, never. Yeah, it, I mean, there's basically no day where there is not some news somewhere about a data breach. Like, it's unfortunately that's yeah. that's the case. It's unfortunate. Okay, let's move on to the topics for this week. Uh, as always, we talk about beta. iOS 15.3 beta 1 was released this past week. Uh, they seeded the first ones, 15.2. It just came out the week before the, the final version. Um, I don't see too much as far as any exciting... The, the updates uh, in this version, at least uh, I haven't done said anything. I couldn't find anything new. Yeah, I mean, uh, just just no. bug fixes. I have a feeling they're going to add some stuff later. I mean, otherwise, they would have just done fifteen dot what is it two dot something. Mm-hmm. I think fifteen two is the current one, right? Yes, yeah, so they could have done fifteen two point one or two point yeah, two. Yeah, something, something like that. So, so I'm I'm pretty sure they have some plans for some breaking changes or some some bigger changes. It would make sense. I'm surprised they even released anything over Christmas. I think it shows that that development is now like global, basically, because not fact, every not everybody is doing Christmas. So. In fact, it kind of leaked out <laughs> in, in <laughs> first, which I found to be bizarre. I've never seen a, a beta like a, a incremental beta leak like this did. And, uh, and then of course it got released not too far after long after that. So um. I, I have a feeling they, they wanted to release it and then something like they wanted to double check something. So they stopped it and right. then held pushed it back it for unknown reasons. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, you don't want to push something out that, you know, is going to destroy phones or whatever. Like it has happened. So, but of course, it we're has. still waiting for you. Uni- we're still waiting for universal control for for mm-hmm. Monterey to to, to work. Uh, that hasn't happened, and then of course, uh, putting your IDs in the wallet app that's still that's still ongoing. Um, yeah. So, those are a couple of the notable uh, things that are yeah. still waiting. Um, I think the watch and, and iPad. There really isn't much else. Uh, the same thing with watch. It's mm-hmm. probably just going to be bug fixes. Nothing yeah. crazy. TVOS is always never, never of anything exciting. No, p- coming out to TVOS. So pretty quiet on the Western Front here with uh, with beta uh, for this week. Mm-hmm. So no surprise for the end of the year. No, no. not a surprise. But it's at all. not like th- the surprise is that they even did it. Right. Yeah. Because right. I mean, traditionally in the past they. They, like Christmas was basically when Apple shut down. I mean, they shut down the iTunes store, like the that's well, right. the back end at least, not the front end. You could still buy stuff, but, at but least I think they like, changed that. Anything. I think they've changed yes, that they changed that. They changed it this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Which it just great. shows you that they that they now have international offices and and enough people that can 
deal with with everything while the US and Europe at least yeah. shut down. And, and that's good. I mean, mm -hmm. we live in a in in a complete world, not mm -hmm. a segmented world. And uh, right. and Apple's a big enough company yes. that right. There's no reason for them to not have had a uh, a worldwide presence for managing uh, App mm -hmm. Store updates and uh, beta updates and uh, all the stuff that gets mm -hmm. previously got shut down at the end of the year. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, we yeah. have the same thing. I mean, we have people in the Ukraine developers, and they like their Christmas. I mean, they have Orthodox Christmas, which is what was it? January seventh, I want to say six, seven, something like that. Um, and they work over over our Christmas time, basically. Yep. So, all right, let's uh, move on to uh, let's do a little bit of the Apple year in review. How how <laughs> how did Apple do? But was there, what was the best? What was the worst in twenty twenty one? I think there's some decent things this year, but there was kind of some. Not so decent things. I don't. I think. I think the panel here will. Uh, mm. will we'll, we'll definitely go through a few of these discussion points here. Uh, first one, things we kind of thought. You kind of think about it. The HomePod Mini. We just talked about it. Um, technically speaking, there was a, re a new release. They released new colors. <laughs> so I, I guess you could call <laughs> that as a release. I don't know if you really would. Yeah, what do you they have? Orange now, yellow, blue, uh, and, and a number of other colors. Um, so it, it was. It, it was uh, great to see new colors. You know, just people can have fun with them. But uh, again, mm -hmm. the speaker is not uh, is not evolving, and and I, and I no. really think I mean it's it's getting there. I mean I think yeah. I think the fact that uh, the smart home the devices are starting to increase in popularity in, as far mm -hmm. as working with HomeKit. Uh, talked about this yes. before, where there's minimal amount of numbers of what's uh, what's in uh, for home HomeKit, whereas. Amazon and Google have really got a domination in the marketplace for it. But, uh, but you, we talked about this, Patrice, and, and mm -hmm. so some of the plugs you you just purchased and they are HomeKit compatible, yes. but there's some that aren't. Yeah. But I mean, don't forget there were some. I mean, I'm I'm definitely agreeing with you. The HomePod has still a way, long way to go, and we talked about yeah. that. But I was just thinking about it, like what happened this year. And I'm not sure. I think they introduced Thread last year, or maybe it rolled out this year because I don't remember it being there mm -hmm. in the beginning. But I mean, they did announce uh, basically that that the HomePod would be like the gateway for other devices to use Siri, for example, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. So they have added some some let's say software features to the to the HomePod, some HomeKit features. Um, I have not seen it being widely adopted, but I didn't expect mm -hmm. it to anyway because I mean, <laughs> uh, it. it it takes, I mean, it's hardware. It takes a while or it's probably part, partly hardware. So it takes a while to roll that out. But I think at least, I think Echo B at least integrated Siri, maybe, maybe some others. Yeah, it did. I have an Echo B. Um, and it, it, it uh, I have to check that because I do have integrated currently with, with mm. my Echo. Uh, well, it is an Echo. Let me just go up yes, to it. Yes, it is an Echo. The, yeah, but I think uh, they added, I think I remember an announcement that they added support for Siri or you can add it. As software, um, in software, yeah, the firmware upgrades, but, yeah, because it was already in HomeKit, so that that was an easy one. That's true. Um, but uh, other than that, I haven't heard too much. But uh, yeah, the, I mean, I, I remember was which event was that? Was that WFTC where they had the whole house in in the video? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, so Apple is definitely pushing it. Yeah, for sure. I thought about this weird concept, but would you think the HomePod, the, the larger HomePod, come back? Uh, maybe something like a Max. You know, they 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 have a Max nope. AirPods. You know, no, you don't think so. Mm. Nope. I think I think they will bring something to the line eventually, but I don't think it's gonna be the HomePod as we know it. I I could see something like a like a TV bar or like a like a the, bigger setup. I eventually. Uh, I agree. Yeah, the the bridge that Apple crossed when they retired the HomePod, mm -hmm. they burned that bridge. Yeah, they would and have not done that if they if they could do another or if they wanted to do another device. They would yeah. have just kept going and just not producing many of them and, until they have a replacement. Yeah, 
Yeah, that they they made a very clear statement, which is mm -hmm. the the original HomePod design is done and gone forever. Yeah, I'm sad. I'm looking at it right now up there. I know. Still have, yeah, I have one here next to me. It's all, I, I really two. like it. I got two here. <laughs> I do really it still like works. it, but but I think yeah. I mean, the market was pretty clear in that it was just too too, too expensive too, for too what expensive. it was. It was. But yeah. I luckily got a good deal, and pretty much two for the price mm -hmm. of one. So. Me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> That's the way to do it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I'm still running without uh, stereo home pods, um, but uh, I, so I you think really I don't need to. Yeah, but you know, you kind of <laughs> you want to. I know you kind of want to. So <laughs> I, I think I'm just going to have to get another home pod mini, and mm -hmm. that will be my my home pod stereo setup. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Like for the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And since I have the Sonos Move as a as another speaker, and you can you can quote unquote pair them in AirPlay because you can get them to play both at the mm -hmm. same time, uh, that gets a pretty good sound. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, you're living the multi speaker life. <laughs> thanks, th thanks to my work for giving me an anniversary present. So, oh, I nice. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have bought that otherwise because uh, I already had the HomePods. But hey, mm -hmm. they're going to offer me a Sonos Move, which is you know pretty pretty good price to speaker. Mm -hmm. and it's actually pretty awesome. Um, I, I do like that uh, one as well. So, um, and then um, AirTag. AirTag was a big thing this past year. I mean, relatively big. I guess it's, it should say uh, does have some room for improvement. I think uh, biggest thing I think really was that's been standing out with the, with the AirTag as of late is uh, these security concerns. You know, these rogue yeah. tags being placed in cars. And there, I think there was a story we talked about where. In fact, it caught my eye because it was a guy who had a charger, which I own, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that he said that his phone was telling him there's a there's an air tag in, in in your car. And it was and it was buried, I guess, under the back of his I don't know if it was in his trunk or where his, where his spare tire was, but they buried it pretty good. But he was able to find it because Apple changed this, the security to, to allow it, uh, these air tags to be uh, identified if some, somebody was doing it. Same thing if someone's dropping it in, in a woman's purse or, you know, mm -hmm. you know or if they, they put it in their someone's pocket or whatever, you know, they're. They're doing a good job, but you know, press was always having to sensationalize that just a little bit. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, uh, but you know, what do you, th what do you think? How AirTag itself, uh, Jeff? Call and start with you. Where, where, where do you think AirTag is, and how how is it evolving for you? Um. Okay, so AirTag turned out to be a, a surprise for me on a personal level uh -huh. because um, with all the traveling that that I did in the before time when uh, we didn't have the pandemic. Uh, I, I'd put tile trackers on right. all of my luggage, my computer bag, uh, and and it was great. And uh, then AirTag comes out during the pandemic, and I thought I'll get one so that I can uh, uh, talk about it from firsthand experience. And uh, and in the end, I should have bought a four pack because it would have cost me less. Because uh, much to my surprise, I liked it so much. I wanted to put air tags on other things, and um, yeah, and here we are. Now, as far as the security goes, I'm having a really, really hard time with this. Yeah, and and it's because it's not that I'm looking at what Apple's doing and thinking I can't believe that Apple has created such uh, a, an insecure, unsecured device. I'm looking at it thinking, how can we have made it this long without having the same thing, uh, the same type of coverage happening for Tile, which is actually, to the best of my knowledge, never happened. And Tile is, what, seven years old? At least. Mm -hmm. and, there, and there is literally no privacy or security protection with Tile at all. And when I say literally, I'm not saying that in a hyper, hyperbolic way. I, I'm using literal, literally in the correct definition. <laughs> in the literal <laughs> sense. Yeah. In the, I'm using literally in the literal sense. And, uh, and everything that they're complaining about with, uh, with AirTags, I'm thinking, people, we've been able to do this for years with, uh, with Tile. Oh, so, and, and much longer with other yeah. devices. I mean, GPS... Right trackers and so on have been around for forever basically right yeah and uh, and you can get a pet collar gps tracker mm -hmm. that's pretty small just just cut the parts off that uh, hold it on to a pet's neck now it's even smaller mm -hmm. and uh, and you can drop that in someone's bag 
I'm, I mean, it's not that we didn't predict this. The, right. the funny thing is when I, when, I, when I bought it, I bought it late because I waited. I wasn't sure because I wasn't traveling. I wasn't sure I needed it. And I barely, I mean, I've, <laughs> I have ADHD, so I, I, I will forget things and lose things. But I've over, over my life basically come up with coping mechanisms so that I always know where my stuff is. So I didn't really need it. And then after a little while, I was like, okay, I'll just buy a four pack because it's not that expensive. And, and I really want to give it a try. And I've been super, like the one time I traveled, I feel super happy to have it because I could keep track of everything and I knew where it was. So it's, it's sad when, when it was released, we talked about it and, and I, I predicted that, that the, the privacy side would be the biggest problem for it. And that women especially would be like, it would be a concern. Funny enough, the, like the first stories really weren't about like women being stalked. And I've seen them on Twitter. Right. It was about guy, guys and their cars. So that, right. that's, that, that tells you a lot <laughs> about this thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. On Go Twitter, on, on yeah. Twitter. I mean, a lot of people are using, are using this to like, to, to, to sensationalize the whole thing and say, Oh, look how bad Apple is. And like, you know, Apple bashing is very popular, but there is a real concern and I think Apple could do more. And I said that day one, Apple can do more. Apple should allow you to scan. Like they have reduced the time. Like I think it used to be after three days, if a, if a tracker was with you after three days, it would, it would tell you, which is way too late because that's, I mean, yeah, that's way if, too you, if, you, if you have it on you and you go home, it, someone will know where you live after a couple hours latest. Yeah, it should be three days enough. is a long time. They've changed it now to I think somewhere between eight and twenty four hours. But I personally think they should they should add a scanner. And you can get a scanner for your iPhone. There are Bluetooth scanners, mm -hmm. and it will show air tags. It will actually show tiles as well. It will not show GPS trackers. So you can get that, but Apple should just build it into the app. And then like for us, it's easy. Like we can just open the app and, and scan and see, okay, someone put something in my purse. I, so, I agree. Apple can do more. Apple is doing a lot. And I'm surprised that Apple thought of that. And I think that shows the diversity within Apple that, that it wasn't just because for, I would say for most men, it's probably not a, not a concern, but for a lot of women, it is. And Apple thought of that, and I said that, that that shows that Apple is conscious of that and probably has the right people in the right places to to yep. yeah address that. Mm -hmm. But they can do more. Sure, and, and I'm totally fine with uh, holding Apple to a high standard. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, though, all of these other tracker device makers need to be held to that same standard. Mm -hmm. The entire industry, like GPS trackers, it's the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely, I mean, I am holding up at Apple to a higher standard, but all those stories that I see, I still roll my eyes. I'm like on Twitter, I almost like I, I censored myself and I didn't respond the way <laughs> I would because I saw one of those threads and I was like, again, yeah. Um, yeah, instead I kept it, kept it clean and simply told them to go like, Go report it to the police. Pound sand. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I, I just told I just told them because I mean it is a bad situation, and I just told it them is. go report it to the police. Air tags are, are are linked to Apple IDs. I know that probably doesn't help you all that much because if it's a fake Apple ID, like a one off one, like a throwaway ID, yeah, right. then then that might not help too much. But I mean, you never know. Apple might be able to do something. Yeah. And, and ironically, this was the only new, brand new product that Apple released this year, because there was nothing else that was new, uh, brand new, hmm. like a new product line. You know, AirTag was, was okay, uh, not a new think? product line. Uh, I'll accept okay. that. a new product. Were... Excuse me, I'm sorry, <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong term there. A new product. Yes, and it was a new product. It's not a line just yet. <laughs> <laughs> they come up with some more stuff for it be a product Not, line. Do they right. have a second one? My bad, uh, but it's a new one of the only new product of of, of this past year. Hmm. So, right. uh, but it's a uh, it's definitely good. Definitely, I I I'm enjoying them. I think they're good. I mean, a lot a lot of times I have I have I've got them on. I have my set of work keys. I got my set of my 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 car keys, and mm -hmm. then I have one in my backpack, and then I have one in my. Uh, 
Siri on uh, my Siri Apple TV remote. So I got, I'm covered with the four pack. So I got the four pack and mm-hmm. uh, which is what I should have done in the beginning. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I can still do it. I mean, nobody's yeah, not buying more. From doing yeah. Well, you know, um, when I need more, I'm just going to buy a four pack this time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Um, then the iPhone, iPhone 13. Uh, it wasn't a dramatic upgrade over the 12. Um, I mean, yes, it had, uh, I think we we saw a definite improvement with the camera, and we just talked about it with the cinematic mode and the the, the ProRes uh, video and uh, a lot of things that they've added. Uh, but was it a justifiable upgrade? And I, as we talked about this on previous shows here, uh, you know, if you had the iPhone 12, there really was no no compelling reason to, to upgrade to the 13 if you really felt like you had to. Me and, and I think you, Patrice, as well, you know, we, we tend to upgrade every year because we love it. <laughs> and <laughs> and the, the, the Apple upgrade program works well for me. Uh, so uh, it, I either can trade it in or someone is interested in mm-hmm. buying, it, buying it after a year, which I, that did happen with my family member this year. Uh, then, uh, yeah, they'll get a, they'll, they'll get a decent price for a 12 you know, versus a, a 13, which they did. Um, but what do you, what do you think, uh, Patrice? Patrice, I mean, what what the 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 product was just, I think, just an incremental upgrade for this year, right? There wasn't really unless you feel something else. Mm. Yeah, I think mostly yes, and 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 that's fine. Um, I would say the 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 mini was maybe the only one that wasn't really an incremental upgrade because I don't think don't think we had a twelve mini, right? Maybe uh, I misremember. Twelve mini, yes, we did. Okay, so then then and even thirteen that mini one as well. Yeah, yeah. And then then that one. Yeah, I mean it, it it is a significant enough upgrade for me from twelve to thirteen. I mean, I came from the eleven. I didn't because like mm-hmm. I can't get the upgrade program here anymore. Because I mean, I was still mm-hmm. enrolled until recently, but I can't get it here because it does not exist outside of the US. Mm-hmm. Another one of those things that don't exist here. Uh, <laughs> So I, I I switched from the eleven to the, to thirteen and that was a big enough jump. But even that one yeah. wasn't massive. No. Like the design is mostly the same. Yes, you got an extra camera. Yes, you got a nicer screen. Yes, you got more battery, well, much more battery life actually. But it's yeah, I, I, I am having a hard time getting excited about iPhones these days. I think uh, I think we've reached it reached a point where they're mature. They are. I agree. Uh, we, yeah, we, we've reached that point. The big change that I look at every year in uh, in iPhones is what's happened with the camera. Mm-hmm. That's mostly that's the only change. I mean, the battery life does improve mostly, which is great. Uh, yeah, but yeah. It's it's about what's in the camera, and mm-hmm. honestly, I would have an iPhone 13 sitting on my desk right now, uh, 13 Pro instead of a 12 Pro. If I'd been able to keep my uh, my ten working for me the way I needed, just mm-hmm. a few more months, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, but I hit the, I hit a wall where I realized I just I, I cannot wait for <laughs> that next model, and so I got a twelve, and then like five months later we get the thirteen, and uh, and I thought well I could sell the twelve and get the thirteen or. I could just do the easy thing and keep the 12, which is what I did. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that camera. Wow. Yeah. And, and I think that's the thing with mature products. It's an, it's not anymore about, okay, what's the next, like, what's the next, what's the latest, let's wait for the next phone because it's going to be a major jump. You get it when you need it. You get it when, when like right. when your phone breaks or when you mm-hmm. just feel like it's time. Yep. Yep. I, I'm with you. And I think that, I mean, it, I think Warren and Warren experienced that with his wife. I experienced that with my wife. That the fact that why do we need upgrade for? I I like this phone. I don't want to change it. I got to get a new case. I got to do you know. Uh, I finally talked her into it. So she she go she yeah. went with the thirteen. I I, I said to her, don't. Th- there's no reason to buy the thirteen Pro. You're not going to use it. The thirteen is mm. a perfectly suitable uh, iPhone. Yeah. Cameras it are is. fine. I mean, then so she went with that uh, in its uh, mm. in itself. So. Um, and I think Warren was the same way. You know, I mean, yeah. she, but I think she was on the iPhone 10. So, like, mm. like, like you, uh, Jeff, you, you definitely see 
quite a drastic difference between the iPhone yeah. 10 as the as was as from the to the iPhone 13. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But that is that is a different story. I mean, it, 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 like some people can have a phone for 7 years and and it's like yeah. half broken and the battery lasts 5 seconds. And when you when you tell them to upgrade they're like, "Why? Like I like this phone. It works for me." Yeah. Like, okay. It works yeah, for me for five six, minutes. Yeah, exactly. Six plus is still in use. It's still, it's still oh, yeah. compatible. This, no, this camera here goes. is a seven, by the way. Seven. <laughs> yep. So, uh, and then uh, next, next on the line here is the iPad. Now, the iPad Pro 2021 was a brand new year, brand new processor. We remember during the event uh, earlier this year, there was the, the big exciting announcement that uh, the M1 processor is now in the mm -hmm. iPad. Uh, it Tim wasn't Cook a great growth. It wasn't a mat. great. Yeah, we broke in the lab, and Tim Cook was uh, with his mastermind, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, was it was it a big upgrade? I'm no. leading towards not. Um, I had a 2018 no. iPad Pro, and I upgraded to the 2021. Was it a substantial mm -hmm. upgrade? I mean, I do I do see some performance improvements. I you know I did a geek bench on it and definitely saw it. it. It made a difference, but the normal person I don't see it being a huge deal. What do you think, Patrice? No. I don't. I mean, is it good that Apple put it in? Yes, because I mean, what else could they do? Like they have to put a new processor in. Might as well do the M1. It is closest to a to a like desktop machine. So yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, neither the operating system nor the software is there to really use right. it. I mean, with some some really rare exceptions, like if you're really if you're using your iPad to edit like multi layer Photoshop files, maybe or like record stuff. Um, I mean, I don't know how you're doing that. You do but some some really people do serious video editing. You yeah, so like, yeah. But as I said, most I'm not sure a lot of people do that. Um, I mean, there's a reason why I stayed with the 2018, and and I'm honestly not planning on upgrading to an uh, iPad Pro next year. After four years, I'm like it's not, it's it's doing the few things that it needs to do, and I'm honestly considering the, like buying a new iPad and it not being a Pro because I'm like I don't need it. Yeah. You know the yeah. uh, this is dis disappointing. Just for, uh, uh, like the iPad Pro, the, the 2021, honestly for me was a bit of a disappointment. Well, the, the exciting thing for me in the 2021 iPad is that it had the M1 processor. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's kind of a hollow excitement because, like you said, Patrice, there's nothing that's really taking advantage of that processor. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's a cool device, but not one that that uh, I could justify buying. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah, and honestly, the the iPad that came out this year that I got excited about is the Mini. Yeah, yeah we'll talk about that. A lot of people did. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. No, yeah, but good, that's a good, uh, actually just, a good good segue. We'll yeah, go ahead and finish your point. One last one last thing, like. It, <laughs> That's the difference between the iPad and, and, and the Mac. I mean, the MacBook Air has the same chip, has a very similar display. But I could get the MacBook Air and tax it to the Mac. Easy. Mm -hmm. I would have a hard time taxing the iPad Pro. Because I, can't, I have a hard time finding apps that could do it. Yeah. Right, because so they're limited. Yeah. But uh, good segue, uh, uh did you did you actually get a iPad uh, iPad uh, iPad Mini Gen six Gen yet, uh, Jeff? I have not, and okay. uh, and I can tell you exactly why. I, I blame the pandemic <laughs> because uh, you know it used to be in in the before time, it, it was just so easy to walk into an Apple store, look at the device, and and be like, "Yep, that's it," and and uh, get exactly what you want and walk out the store. And now I don't want to go in stores, so I um, I I have not even held the new iPad Mini yet, and uh, and that's why I've been able to put off actually buying it. Although I I I should I should have just bought one already because <laughs> it it's not even like I want it just because I covet the device. Uh, you know, I, I'm still using an iPad Mini 4, and 
uh, the battery life is shot and yeah. it's it's sluggish with uh, with iOS 15. And, you know, and I can just go on and on with the other ands about mm-hmm. about why it's time for me to get a new one. So I think I'm actually talking myself into just getting one because, hey, I've got an Apple card. Yeah, um, there you go. And, uh, and I think it qualifies for the for the uh, interest free financing. Yes, it does. Yeah, you're you're financing. Uh, oh, I just bought an iPad. Um, maybe. <laughs> um, and my power just went out. Oh no! Yep. There it goes. It's back. There, yeah, you froze. <laughs> this yeah. this is why it's important to have battery backups on all the mm-hmm. critical yeah. equipment. Yeah, yeah, that was mm, great. I should get that. Yeah. It's pretty seamless. <laughs> yeah, apparently oh. my camera though is not on uh, on the battery. Yep, yeah, it, it flashed for a minute. But, 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 but you're back. Uh, yeah. So, but the the big thing with the iPad Mini, uh, I'll, I'll be brief with that. Was the USB C port? Uh, now the entire line has USB USB C port, except for the ninth gen uh, iPad, um, and then eight point three inch screen, much better screen, liquid mm-hmm. display, a fifteen Bionic. I can go on and on. So you really got to decide: was that the iPad for you? And, and obviously, it fits for your um, uh, fits for you, Jeff. So you might be uh, there. Might be a new iPad Mini in your. Yeah near future uh you know it's not even a case of it might be in my near future <laughs> it the real question is what date do i pull the trigger there you go do you wait for the next one <laughs> well at this point why would i wait or for not. the next one yeah but well, yes exactly. well okay. i mean especially since we don't know it might be another two years it might so. be a couple years and it could uh, be. and and if I do the thing where I wait for the next one for more features, I do exactly what I tell people not to do, <laughs> which is which is wait to see what's coming next, because mm. then you'll always wait. You'll never get what you need when you need it. Yes, it's true. Absolutely. And then, uh, but like I said, I mentioned the, the ninth gen iPad. They keep evolving on that. That one's still on Lightning, uh, but does a job for someone who wants a really budget iPad starting, I think, around yeah. $329. Schools. Schools will have them for two ninety nine. Mostly again. schools. Most of schools. A lot of schools. Using. A lot of businesses for like simple yeah. things where they really don't need the power. They just need a screen right. for simple apps. A very, um, a very smart move on Apple's part to uh, mm-hmm. to make this iPad. Yeah, and I mean they, they they always like it's also very smart. They always announce education pricing, and I'm pretty sure if if a large enough organization comes and says, we want to buy 100,000 of these, Apple is going to make even a better deal. Of yeah. course they will. Yeah. Education pricing is just the published lower mm-hmm. price, not <laughs> yeah. the actual lower price. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then um, the and we talked about earlier a little bit, the, the Apple Watch Series 7. Slightly larger display. The battery life was a little better. I don't Honestly, I don't think it's really extremely worth the upgrade, but, you know, crazy me. I, I did upgrade this year um, only because I had a nice gift <laughs> and I had a good tra- and I got had a good trade in on my Series 6. So mm. it didn't cost me as much because I had you know, a little gift card and I had uh, um, and I had the trade in. So it kind of put me over the edge. But I, I do like it. I like the, the, I do like the way the size of the Apple Watch is. So compared to the six um if you have the if you mm-hmm. have the lower models like the four or lower, and then you might want to consider it. Um, yeah. The, the know, display is really four, nice, and I couldn't justify buying the seven. Yeah, so if you got the four, I think three and lower for sure. You don't. Oh, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, if yeah. you're on a three, yeah, it's yeah. time. Four and five and six, I think you're fine. I mean, I don't think there's any really. Apple is still selling the. I think the four, right? They're selling the three. And so three, three, even. three, which to me is crazy. Just the three, and that then, the, crazy. And then yeah. the seven. Yeah, they don't sell. They're not selling the uh, the four or the five anymore, or the six. I thought they had three models that they were still selling. Three. They're selling series three. So. Yeah, Oops, series yeah. three, three, seven. I thought they had one. They have the, the SE. Three. They have the SE. Oh, the SE. That's the seven. You're right. Yeah. So yeah, I the, I've the, seen I've seen the the Apple Watch in the store, and the the display is really really nice. It is. And I could yeah, definitely use is. the battery life. I, I could yeah. use the battery life because I'm, nice I'm wearing it. I I thought about it and I looked at the trade-in here in Austria for the current one, and then I just decided it wasn't worth the cost. Yeah. But like I said, the gift card kind of put me over the edge. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I would have done the same thing. For sure. Um, uh, and then um, 
briefly i'll talk about airpods the airpods third gen that was that was a little bit overdue i mean because the, the <laughs> second gen was a, a, a little ways to go i still love my i'm i'm still using them i have the airpods pro here and they're great uh, but for a little more lower price and getting you know decent decent quality sound the airpods 3 you can't beat them um mm-hmm. the craziest thing that they released this year <laughs> this thing <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the polishing cloth um mm-hmm. it's been back ordered for like months i mean it came out yes. i think like two months ago and i think it's still on back order oh it's and, still back ordered yeah, yeah. And, and it's 19 bucks and how much does you think it costs apple to make this thing two bucks uh two yeah or 250 they include this you know of course you got to spend five thousand dollars for the the high-end monitor uh, for <laughs> uh, that goes along with your mac pro and they include it but why yeah. can't they include this with a you know people spending over two thousand dollars on a macbook pro mm-hmm. or something like that yes. so uh, a little bit of the craziest of the of the products that were released this year that uh, of course oh, for sure yeah. Us Apple uh, I, enthusiasts have to buy one, right? <laughs> oh, for sure. The funny thing is, I ordered um, late November. I ordered my MacBook Pro. As you said, crazy expensive. I should have included yeah. the twenty bucks, but I, I added it. And I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna get my Mac probably by Christmas, and then like late January, I'll probably get the polishing cloth. Right now, it's looking like the bill is gonna show up at the same time. Yeah. So I was saying six to eight weeks. So, and then. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the the the, uh, the retirement of products. Uh, sadly, the HomePod is gone, which we just talked mm-hmm. about. The 10R has now been retired. That's the camera I'm actually yeah. using right now. You use the seven. I'm using the 10R. Is my uh, webcam? <laughs> 10R is uh, a good iPhone. It is oh, a good yeah, iPhone. It's a good still. camera. That's yeah, great camera. Yep. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, Upgrade. Uh, but it's still <laughs> uh, the funny thing is you could say that these all these phones have been retired but you could still find them you know you could still mm-hmm. find them in the third party sellers and oh for sure yeah you know, so mm-hmm. yeah and so uh, it, it definitely is uh, something we can do so uh, briefly we talk a little bit we can talk a little bit about our our, our, our expectations of what's going to happen in 2022 since we're at the we're at the year end here in two days we'll be in 2022 here less than two days um I, I talked about the the lightning connector of of its death. I don't know if it's going to happen. You know, you, you and I, uh, Patricia, we we all had a bit of a debate, bit of a debate about that. <laughs> we could try, try talk about just that topic real quick about twenty twenty two. There's so many yeah. others I can. I'll bring up next week during uh, next mm-hmm. week's show. But I still think it's going to happen. I, I just I just can't see how Apple can continue on with the, with this old technology. I mean, I know they held on to the thirty pin connector for a good good long while. But that yes. had to go, and it did. Uh, but uh, I still think it's going to happen. I I agree with you that they're going to switch away. I'm I'm convinced that they're going to go move away from a connector at all, like completely. And 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 here's my reasoning: something mm-hmm. you might not be aware of, the Apple Watch Series Seven has a a high band wireless connection uh, capability mm-hmm. in it. That, that uh, Apple got, I think, FCC approval for, and I think they're using it, or at least that's what the, the findings said. They're using it right now for diagnostics. Mm-hmm. So basically, instead of the diagnostics port that they had, they can now just plop it on, on a special pad probably and then just connect to it. And I'm thinking that that is the trial run for a replacement for the iPhone. For the iPhone. Okay. I just think if they wanted to switch to USB-C, they could have done it. They could have done it like two, three years ago. They decided not to. And I think they're just waiting it out until they have that in place. And it might be this year. It might be next year. But it's like, I think I think we, what we can agree on is lightning is on, on the way out. Yeah. Just when? I, 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 just I a matter agree. of when. Uh, and, and Dave, I... I disagree with you that it'll be USB-C. Patrice, yeah. I think uh, you nailed it. And I, th- I think that the Apple Watch, in some ways, has become Apple's new iPod Nano. Yeah. And what I mean is the iPod Nano was a test bed for Apple. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so you could look and see what they're doing there and get an idea of what was coming to other Apple products later on. And I think that uh, the Apple Watch, to a degree, is serving that purpose now. And yeah, yeah, and so they're testing this new um, data connection system on the watch. 
And if it works the way that they want it to and expect it to, then we can see that come to the iPhone later. Yeah. Um, uh, not to the iPad, for, probably no. for a long time, if ever, yeah. because yes. there's a different use case where, right, where you need to have that USB-C port. File connection. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the drive, iPads drives. are closer to... Yeah, the iPads are simply closer to Macs in in usage, and right. that's why it, why it makes sense. You're right, Jeff. Like the the Apple Watch is kind of a test bed, and it makes sense because it's a low volume product where they can they can try things and, and test things out. And like, if something is if something breaks, it's not a. I mean, it's it's not going to affect many people because like it's it's still a low. It sells a lot, but it's still low for Apple. A low volume like yeah. purchase or volume line. And and I mean, even if they have to replace a device, it's not gonna. Co it's not as expensive as as an iPhone. They can just like worst case, they'll just produce new ones that yeah. don't have the whatever broken bit and just replace them. And yes, there's gonna be a new story about it, but it's the Apple Watch, so oh, always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see what happens in 2022 because mm -hmm. uh, there's gonna be plenty more to talk about. Uh, and we'll oh, save for that sure. for when we get back into the new year. But uh, I have two apps I wanted to talk about really quick before we wrap <laughs> things up for the year here. Uh, the first one here I found super interesting was for Apple Watch. It's called the Watch Faces Gallery Number One. Um, it does offer in-app purchases. It's uh, it, it, it you install it on your iPhone, of course, and then it's gonna come up with some really cool custom. Um, Apple Watch, uh, watch faces that, uh, uh, and you can actually ha have some fun with it. Uh, it's not too terribly expensive either. I mean, I think the, it's free to try. And then I think it's like about seven bucks if you want a lifetime. Uh, and then the faces app will, will give you some really cool nifty little, uh, uh, uh face, the watch faces on it, which is, uh, that, that was kind of cool. So mm -hmm. check that out. It's, uh, something different. Um, and the other app I wanted to talk about, and in fact, you asked about this with TV, uh, Jeff, and that's what caught my eye. And uh, Dave mm -hmm. Hamilton actually uh, suggested this. This is a mm -hmm. app called TV Time. So it lets you be your your TV guide, and then you can uh, track what movies you like and what you want to watch next, and get notified what's uh, going to be available. It has an app, uh, I believe, for the iPad and the iPhone. I put a link in the show notes to the. Uh, to their website um, so it's 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 an actual site that you can set up for an account and sign in uh and uh as i said it's available for both app iphone and, and it actually works on android too uh so uh check that out too i thought that was a cool way and i know we've got some shows to watch here because uh, uh cobra, <laughs> cobra yes. kai just came out i gotta watch that oh, um, see another one to add to the spreadsheet that i made that yep, i will and, switch over to tv time <laughs> I'm sure you have Boba Fett on, on your on your list. Yeah, I've uh, already watched that, the first episode. I gotta no watch that still. Oh, it's good. Yeah, I gotta mm -hmm. get on there. Dexter yeah. and New Blood. Yeah. Just came out today. Oh. Dexter's Dexter's out. It's showtime, mm -hmm. and then the, mm -hmm. the movie I want to see is the Being Ricardos uh, for Lucy uh, Lucille oh, Ball. Yep. I haven't had a chance to watch really that yet. Interesting. I want to check that out? Discovery Star Trek Discovery is still going, and it's uh, it's mm -hmm. great. So there's, there's Prodigy a, yes. starts back up next week. Yep, yes. Prodigy's coming back. Discovery so. is on is on hiatus until the tenth of February, I think. Well, they have one and more episode. They just had the latest week. episode today. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's today's Thursday. Yeah, we better go watch mm -hmm. it. Uh, if you ha if you haven't watched, don't look up. Put that on your list oh, too. Yes, <laughs> don't look up. Yes. Yeah, it is yes. so good. hilarious. <laughs> so check that app out too. I think it's. Uh, it's going to be a great. Uh, uh, it's going to be a, a great way to, to track all your all the time you spend TV watching. I I've been binge watching Shit's Creek because I hadn't ever watched it. Oh, Shit's uh, Creek is so good. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm in that, I'm in season five now. So it, you're it's, ahead it's, of me. Uh, I, I I finally started. Gave in. It's like ah, I don't want to watch this. But then I started watching. Like oh my god, this is so funny. <laughs> Uh, I'm going through Homeland again, and I'm I'm at the point where they have German actors that that uh, like. German actors and bad German like script. <laughs> no, who did that? <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> someone use so, Google Translate. That's yeah. that's basically the level of script. I'm like, okay, like Ouch. you could have done a better job. <laughs> I mean, at least they're German actors. So, like, yeah, <laughs> true, true. Oh, all right, <laughs> produced in Germany, German actors, and then yeah, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. All right. Well, this is we have brought this episode to the to a close, and we've brought the year of twenty twenty one to a close. And on in touch with iOS this year, it's uh, 
been quite a whirlwind year. I, I, I think uh, I think we've had a lot of fun this past year, Jeff and, and Patrice. Both you've I just mm-hmm. thank, thank you enough for being on the show as many times as you have, and kind of hope to continue on to have you on in the future because we just have just uh, such a blast and lots and lots of great things to talk about. Uh, like, and that's going on. So. Um, Let's go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at InTouchWithIOS.com. You can fo- follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. We usually record this live stream, uh, 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 usually record the show and, and stream it out live on YouTube on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. We were a little early today uh, for the holiday. And... Uh, that's on our YouTube panel, which is at youtube.com slash DaveG65, which you can also watch the past streams as well as any episodes that we record. Uh, visit uh, In Touch With iOS magazine on Flipboard, where you can uh, see many of the topics that we talk about each week. Uh, the link in the show notes. You can definitely go out and uh, read some of the articles and, and things that we talk about for this week. Uh, and that's out there. You can definitely subscribe in, our, in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others, but... Better yet, go to our website, in touch with iOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dean and, Ginsburg. Yes. And I wanted to mention, since it's on YouTube, like make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the, yes. the thumbs up and like, digital, like subscribe like I'm doing Yeah, no, like the little bell icon that gives Good. you notifications so next yes. time there's a show, Thank you, you will get informed when it's when it's live. Yes, please, please subscribe. I should. I probably should put that in my in my in my uh, uh, spiel here. You should give please, Dave pl- a like, give Dave a subscribe, yes. and uh, and then click the share button and send the link to all your friends too. Oh yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Dave G sixty five. And Jeff, you have a YouTube channel. You can tell everybody else where how they can find you. Oh sure, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash jgamut. Do the same there. Like, subscribe, share. Um, <laughs> And uh, Twitter and Instagram, I'm Jay Gammon on both, and uh, uh, Jay Gammon on Patreon and Buy Me a Coffee. I, I have a pattern there, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to the to the new year because then yeah. we'll be back into Mac Voices Live, the Big Show, and the Mac Show. Yes, we'll be back. Yay. Patrice, thanks so much for being here as well. I always love having yeah. you on. And Thanks tell for everybody, having me and tell, tell moving the show for me. <laughs> yes, of course. And tell everybody where they can find you. Well, I don't have a YouTube uh, channel yet. I should probably get one for Footy Flashback because I'm actually thinking about live streaming that as well, because why not? Um, so look out for that on at Footy Flashback on Twitter. Um, that is actually my podcast where I talk about not about tech and where I interviewed like both David and Jeff and so many other really cool people about food and and their food stories and memories and if you want to know like what restaurants to go to in in chicago then just listen to david's episode because there were so many on it and <laughs> I, actually i have plans for next year to come to chicago and just visit at least a couple of them Can and we? after that episode i was like okay chicago i have to go <laughs> seems to be a cool city for food um, yeah other than that um i'm yeah i'm on the british tech network big show mac show and I don't have consistency in my social media accounts for some reason. I think I'm just switching projects too often. Um, but you can find all the links if you want to buy me a coffee, all the projects, all the podcasts, blog posts, like just everything on our website, thepatrice.com. Excellent. Well, here we are, the end of the year, 2021. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I hope you had a great time listening to all our great shows. You can go back and listen to past episodes. We'll be back next week, which is 2022, and talk about all the new things that are going to be happening next year. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll talk again soon.